Every day, something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. How's Eddie Fedrick? So glad you can join us. Delta has landed in both Grenada and St. Lucia. This story takes center stage in today's edition of Caribbean Perspective for Monday, 16th August, 2021. Details when we return. Hubbard's big promotion is back. Live free for one year. Spend $50 or more in any Hubbard's department and receive a chance to win. Big prizes every month. Property or vehicle insurance for one year. Free internet, cable and data for one year. Free fuel for one year. Free cooking gas for one year. Year. Free electricity for one year, free drinks for one year, extra cash account, and the big free groceries for one year. Promotion runs from April 1st to September 30th, 2021. Live free for one year with Hubbard's in association with Sol Gas, Flow, Grenadian General Insurance, Carib Brewery, Coca Cola, Grenada Bottling Company, Grenlec, Communal Cooperative Credit Union, Dutch Lady Milk, Promo, Danny and Supreme. Terms and conditions apply. <laughs> Welcome back. The highly contagious Delta variant of the SARS-CoV-2 virus has been confirmed in St. Lucia. Health officials in a media briefing impressed upon the public the importance of vaccination against the more menacing strain of the virus. So we have received the last batch of results from the Caribbean Public Health Agency and they've noted that we have six new cases of the variants of concern. Um, three of the cases are the Alpha variant, and we have noted three new Delta cases um, in country. These are the first Delta variant cases that we have recorded in country. Significant severity of the COVID-19 disease, 100% more viral load, and 97% more transmissible. And now, the Delta variant has been confirmed here in St. Lucia. So imagine we were managing... 24 to 70% more transmissible. Now we have a 97% more transmissible with the Delta variant that we are managing now. It is known to cause more severe disease, hospitalization, as well as increased ICU admission and death. According to health officials, the playbook for the virus is now out the window, given that the virus has evolved and now poses a dangerous threat to not only the elderly and immune compromised, but healthy and unvaccinated individuals. With the Delta variant, we see a, a younger age group being affected. We see a younger age group getting complications. And we are already seeing this at the respiratory hospital where we are getting younger persons. Some of them do not have um, chronic conditions. Some of them are healthy persons getting affected, and this is the effect of the Delta variant in most of the countries that it is impacting. The quick-moving virus also has implications for contact tracing efforts by the Ministry of Health. We do have a definition as to what a contact is when we do contact tracing, and it is based on the contact time with a positive case. Because of the, the, the viral load of, of the Delta um, variant, it means it takes a shorter time period in which you can become positive if you are in contact with someone who is positive. The Delta variant has been dubbed the virus of the unvaccinated, given its impact on the cluster. It affects the unvaccinated persons more severely. This is being seen both in the region and internationally. So we are seeing, for us, we still have 100% unvaccinated persons at our respiratory hospital. The rest of the region is seeing a similar trend. Ministry of Health receives confirmation of Delta variant in Grenada. The Ministry of Health on Thursday confirmed that three of the COVID-19 cases recorded in Grenada in recent weeks are the Delta variant. The samples were collected on July 26th from arriving passengers from the United States and sent to the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, for testing. The cases include a 48-year-old male returning national and two non-nationals, a 33-year-old female and a 34-year-old male. Only one of the three was vaccinated. 
Acting Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sean Charles confirmed receipt of the test results from CARF on Thursday morning. He disclosed that two of the cases have already been medically cleared and a third is expected to be cleared soon. No secondary infections connected to these three cases have been identified to date and Dr. Charles said compliance with the COVID-19 protocols is a critical factor in the fight against the spread of the virus. The acting chief medical officer said what matters in large part is human behavior. Is the population inclined to adhere to the protocols, wearing face masks, avoiding crowded settings and sanitizing regularly? Another key consideration is the attitude to vaccination and people utilizing the option to protect themselves against this deadly disease. At the end of the day, we can provide advice as health professionals, but it is really the level of compliance and vaccine uptake that will determine our continued success in the fight against COVID-19. Dr. Charles further said, It is the Delta variant that decimated India earlier this year, with thousands succumbing to its deadly attack. We know for a fact that this variant is far more contagious and deadly. Therefore, armed with this knowledge, the population ought to be keen to get vaccinated to protect themselves and their loved ones. Having not experienced any serious outbreak of COVID-19 here, if the Delta strain enters the population, the impact can be quite concerning. Prior to Thursday's confirmation of the three Delta cases, Grenada had recorded three cases of the Alpha variant, which was predominant in the United Kingdom. To date, 182 cases of COVID-19 have been recorded in Grenada, and at present, there are 10 active cases. End of release from the Ministry of Health, dated 12th August 2021. The hurricane season is now upon us, so we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. Avoid venturing outside during a storm or hurricane, especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. There is a debate about children being vaccinated for the new school year in Trinidad and Tobago, which starts in September. The Tobago House of Assembly Health Secretary Tracy Davidson Celestin is urging parents to sign the consent forms for their children to be vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccines. More from TV6's Elizabeth Williams. Daycare centers and physical school have remained closed for the most part due to the pandemic, forcing parents to find alternatives to supervision. According to Minister of Social Development and Family Services Donna Cox, many parents have turned to their parents for assistance. However, because of the generational gaps between grandparent and grandchild, challenges can arise which might place grandparents in unfamiliar territory. Many grandparents have willingly shouldered this responsibility, taking on the task of supervising remote learning, providing care and protection, including emotional support to children. And these are not easy tasks for persons who have already completed the care and protection of their own children. And so, under the Parenting Program Workshops for 2021, there would be a special focus on grandparents as part of the new Grandparenting Program launched by the Ministry. It is envisaged that this program will support and equip grandparents with the necessary knowledge and skills to make responsible decisions regarding the safety and well-being of grandchildren and other children under their care. The first of these training programs is expected to commence in October and will cover a variety of topics including self-awareness, self-care as a grandparent, stages of child development, challenges of grandparents, gender awareness and parenting, communications and social media, smart devices and online school, Discipline versus punishment, sexuality and teenage pregnancy. 
According to the minister, it is important not only to ensure that grandparents are able to transfer their wealth of knowledge, but to also empower them, as this would redound to strong families and in turn strong communities, enabling a better future for the country. In its 2010 report, the Social Planning and Research Council pointed out that grandparents who play a leading role in the upbringing of their grandchildren are more likely to experience financial hardship as a result, a direct result of their active role. Cox says in addition to accessing the senior citizens' grants, grandparents who assume legal guardianship of their grandchildren might be able to qualify for additional financial aid and services. Julia Gomez says grandparents can sometimes be placed on the back burner or left out of the family equation, depending on their age. As a grandparent herself, she believes the program should be utilized, as she recalls some of the time spent with her own grandmother. We can chili be being alone and taking us to the savannah to play. So this is, to me, something that you know, we should look forward to as grandparents, getting the knowledge, getting how, the understanding of how to really treat with our grandchildren. Alicia Boucher, TV6 News. Guyana's Minister of Health has also announced a week ago that children will be vaccinated using an existing immunization law. But this week he is adding that parents will have to grant permission for their children to be vaccinated. More in this news source Guyana report with Gordon Mosley. During his daily COVID-19 update, the health minister said the process has already been activated to get children vaccinated against COVID-19. We have started sending out letters uh, to parents and they'll have to sign those letters and send them back with the child so that we know whether or not we can vaccinate the child. So that's a very important uh, component of this uh, program because the persons under 18 cannot decide for themselves. Dr. Anthony said that consent from parents will pave the way for the ministry to plan how it will roll out the vaccination in the school system to target the children. He said the Pfizer vaccine will soon become available to Guyana, and that vaccine will become the preferred choice of vaccine for children. We have had uh, discussions with the Ministry of Education, and uh, through the Ministry of Education and through that collaboration, we'll be working to make sure that children who are in school can have access to the vaccines. We will be using different modalities uh, to make sure the children who are at school can get access to the vaccine. And all those out of school youth who would be between the ages of 12 and 18, once we are in that community, they can come uh, to that vaccination site and access the vaccine. Late last year, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration allowed emergency use of the vaccine from age 16. Earlier this year, the vaccine was given to children in the U.S. ages 12 to 15 years old. In March, Moderna started clinical trials of its vaccine in children ages 6 months to 11 years. Over in Jamaica, the country's health authorities are worried that Jamaica is fast reaching a danger zone. More in this TVJ News item. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Jacqueline Masesa Mackenzie painted a grim picture of the COVID hospitalization situation facing the country. She says to date, there are over 600 beds being occupied by COVID patients. That number represents both confirmed and suspected cases. Our peak, March, April, we were at just over 700, and now we are just over 600. So we're fast approaching that peak, which would put us in a very dangerous zone in terms of the threat to um, the, the care for COVID patients in our hospitals. Next slide. And you can see if at the zoning that it puts us in a very high level of pressure on the hospital system when we have this amount of beds that are being occupied by COVID suspected or confirmed cases. The CMO said the positivity rate is also dangerously high. She said the country has gone back to where it was during the peak in March, April of this year. In terms of positivity, we have jumped. We are over 30% um, at a very high transmission level in country. 
our reproductive rate remains at about 1.3, which means that as the numbers go up, more and more persons are being exposed. Did you know that your friends and family can now shop at the Food Fair from anywhere in the world and you can receive here in Grenada? The Food Fair and GrenadaMarket.com now make it possible through secure online shopping and personalized customer service. Simply send your loved ones a list of your preferred items or let them fill an online basket and the items will be available for pickup or delivery. Visit GrenadaMarket.com or thefoodfair.gd today for more details. The new norm. Spread the news. I am Eddie Frederick. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more. (music) 